Hello everybody and welcome back to the Kilowatt Challenge and in today's episode there will be some of this sorted, literally. There'll be one of these. I've got wood. <laughs> will I get away with that? <laughs> and there'll be some of this. Yes, I do look like a Muppet in these glasses. But before all that, make yourself a nice cup of tea, sit down and enjoy the show. So if you're new to my channel, a very warm welcome to you and the background and the reason for all this shenanigans and road trips and flying all over the world and batteries and all that other stuff is because I'm first of all trying to build a homemade DIY Tesla style power wall using thousands and thousands of batteries. I'm going to be installing a pretty big solar array on the house, hopefully somewhere around about 10 kilowatts. Uh, and I'm going around the house and making everything significantly more energy efficient, including a heating system, which is very likely to be a very, very clever log burner. And I'm dying to show you guys that. So if you're interested in all that, please don't click. Please do click the subscribe button. What am I talking about? Anyway, on to today's content. So as you can see behind me over here, in terms of getting batteries recycled, reclaimed, tested and stuff like that, I'm getting on with it now. I've got quite a few. So I thought it might be an idea if I share my top tools tips, God, that's cheesy, <laughs> for DIY power wallers. Come on, take a look. So if you fancy building some of these, the first thing I recommend you get a hold of is one of these. These are absolutely brilliant. It's a heat resistant kind of work pad thing made out of very heavy plastic. Um, it's self healing. So they say if you cut it with a knife, um, then it will somehow heal. It's obviously two sided and look how clean it keeps your workbench. Highly recommend one of these. Now, if you're in the UK, you can buy these from the works and I think they're eight quid and this particular one is the biggest that they do. Maybe more than eight quid. Let's just say a tenner. Um, in the States, I've no idea, but I've seen these on other YouTubers and videos and stuff like that. Get yourself one of these. They are fantastic. A good set of sturdy, strong, proper pliers. Now you're gonna you're gonna use these a lot. These are gonna be like your best friends because if you get a good set, that has a bit of product placement, look at that, <laughs> then when you're opening your batteries, having a good set of tools really, really makes a difference. Oh, Sanyos, look at that, red cells. That feeling when you pop open a battery pack and the cells are red. Anyway, so a good set of proper pliers. A proper, and I mean proper, pair of gloves. Not this type. We all like these types, don't we? They're dead thin, they're really comfortable to wear. They're just too thin. And let me show you why. So here is an 18650 cell. This is the whole point of the whole DIY Powerwall project thing. We're all trying to harvest these out of laptop batteries. Now, the reason why we wear gloves is because obviously there's shards of plastic and here's a little bit, just doesn't look like much, but they're absolutely everywhere. And I think if you're gonna, try and partake in this is it a hobby why do we do this <laughs> um, then you've got to just accept the fact that you're going to have these absolutely everywhere and also you've got to accept the fact that when we're cleaning the ends of the batteries occasionally you're going to be left with and i think you can see that you're going to be left with one of these can you see on the end of the cell a very very small piece of nickel strip that is razor razor sharp now, when I started doing this, I wore thin gloves like this because they were just more comfortable. It's easy to hold tools, etc. But it didn't take long before I got absolutely cut to shreds. And I could show you this, even with that little tiny bit of nickel there. Can you see it? Ooh, watch this. If I can try and just put that inside there. Uh, are we on the glove? No, we're not quite on the glove there yet. There we go. And if I just push that through, look at that, it's gone straight through. You can just see it there, look, just see it's silver there, come in a bit. It's gone through, so these gloves are useless for protecting against that. Now obviously, get them out of the way, get some proper gloves in. These are, same idea, 
they're nice and slightly thicker on the top but this rubber is so much thicker you just don't feel anything um, when you're getting these dags or spikes or whatever coming through uh, from the cells I've found also with these gloves that when you're disassembling the batteries you can actually with the gloves just pull the um, strips of nickel straight off um, I've got increasing confidence with these and having a proper set of gloves has increased my I don't want to sound all corporate but increased my productivity significantly because I know that my hands are going to be protected and absolutely fine so get yourself a proper pair of gloves right next is snips or schnips or snippies or whatever you want to call them everyone's got affectionate names for them why do we use them to remove this oh, look at this dirty old cell this is in my new 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 box it's uh, one of the, my water damaged ones so obviously as you all know we use these to take off the nickel from the end of the cells simple as that now often you get left with little pieces of um, sharp um, nickel residue or from the, uh, the the process of actually welding on there um, and a lot of the guys are using slightly sharper slightly um, better quality um, snips to just take off the last few little bits um, and th this tool has been really quite handy um, it, it's spring loaded so it needs quite a lot of effort so you do get tired um, of using this particular one after a while but I would recommend it it's actually you can find it on the net Put that one out of the way and again this video is not sponsored these are my own opinions now what is cool about this video is this little contraption here if I uh, just squeeze the handle look at that it's actually wire strippers and guess what I've got just out of frame ready for this uh, let's just take the end of that off there we go watch this ready how cool is that dead easy integrated straight into the snoops few dollars few quid whatever have a look on ebay i'm sure you'll find a pair of those a multimeter preferably digital um, something with a bit of accuracy uh, it doesn't have to be too fancy or posh, but something which is going to be give you reasonably consistent results. Sorry about the reflections. I'm totally new to this whole YouTube thing. Oh, I'm doing it again. What a novice. When you get a bit more uh, advanced, you'll probably want to move from one of those to one of these. This is a clamp meter. So it still has all the usual... Let me turn it on for you. Still has all the usual voltage checking and stuff like that but the benefit of one of these is you can actually um, now if I planned this properly I could have shown you a live demo but you can actually measure the current flowing through cables by using the clamp meter like that very handy when you're trying to understand or, or, or get uh, a better picture of how much current drain is coming from or to batteries or from other um, electrical bits and bobs so Highly recommend one of these. Very good, very handy. Now, be honest, come on. How many people actually wear these? Let's be honest, I've got to mention these because <laughs> about a week ago, uh, this little fella hit me in the face while I was cracking open a cell. Uh, and that's uh, that was a bit of a shock. So now, I wear these. Now I admit, yes, I do look like a Muppet in these glasses, however, that is the offending article. It hit me right in the face. So from now on, you'll see me wearing these. Now the next one might surprise you. Would anybody like to guess why I've got wood? <laughs> Cheesy as, yeah I know. Anyway, good fun. It's great YouTube content. I'll show you. Um, when we uh, process the cells, we keep talking about these little sharp bits on the end. It's really nice, or really handy, sorry, to just be able to tap down any last sharp remnants of nickel. And you'll notice, actually, that this piece of wood is well worn down now. I was doing it on the workbench um, when I first started, but I realised that it, it is actually damaging my workbench. So, just any old piece of wood. 
Doesn't cost out, does it? And next, you're going to need one of these. A good sharp knife. A really, really good sharp knife. The uh, battery packs are absolutely full of tape. Electrical tape, um, foam insulation tape, um, all sorts of stuff. So a good sharp knife to be able to cut away a lot of the packaging and protective stuff um, is absolutely essential. Now you might laugh at these, but I'm going to show you anyway. These are really handy. For those of you of an age, like myself, whose eyes are beginning to go, I picked up these. They were about a quid or something. They're reading glasses with, wait for it, integrated LED lights. Yes! These have been really, really good. And if you don't need glasses or whatever, get yourself a head torch. Having the extra little bit of light when you're trying to look down into the insides of a crevice or something like that, trying to get a battery pack open is dead handy. And next, proper little flat bladed screwdriver. Preferably the smaller the blade, the better. Not one of those little jeweler's micro screwdrivers, but something around about that size. What's that? It's about three or four mils. Let me show you why. Here is a battery I made earlier. Again, this is one of my hell no batteries, as you can see, nasty water damage. Um, I use these to get started when I'm trying to remove Come on, Darren, put it in the center of the frame. Such a noob. <laughs> when I'm trying to remove the nickel strip, there's nothing to get started on. So what I do is I use the, the, the tip of the screwdriver to just lift up the nickel like that. And that's just enough to get my little snips in there. And away we go. I'm up and running. Very, very handy. Very, very handy. And I'm sure we've all got one of those, haven't we? So when you've managed to get the cells out of the batteries and you've tested them, you're going to need one of these to write the capacities on the cells. A Sharpie, a proper good Sharpie. And the last one might surprise you. I highly recommend you get yourself three small cardboard boxes. Why? Come on, I'll show you. Here we go. Number one. Check this out. That is full of nickel strips. BMS boards, bits of electronic circles, circles, <laughs> circuitry, uh, and all stuff ready to be recycled. Fall to the brim of it. Surprising how much that's worth in the right hands. Number two, hard plastic. In here, you'll only find the outer casing of the uh, laptop batteries when I'm breaking them apart. You produce a lot of this, a lot of this. And the last one is just for general waste. This is for the, all the bits of tape and just rubbish that comes off. That's heat shrink, uh, lots of foam insulation. Put that all into there, that's kind of general waste. Now, why small boxes? Because when you're in your man cave and you're processing your batteries, to start with, I had big bin bags all around me and stuff stacked everywhere. It just didn't work, it was too much. So I've got, behind the camera, I've got the big bin bags and the big boxes full of all the recycling stuff. But while I'm here on the workbench, I like to just have these small boxes. And once they're full, I just transfer it and dump it into the bigger boxes. Works really well, that is a pro tip. And now, I'm gonna show you that in action. So, here's the battery pack that we looked at earlier on. Get my big pliers into here. Oh, plastic flying everywhere. That's why you wear your goggles. And ripping it apart. Okay, that's a nice piece of hard plastic. That goes straight into recycling in that one there. Get some cells out. Another piece of hard plastic. Straight into that one there. Now, this is all the tape and stuff I was talk talking to you about earlier on. You kind of, you see that? If you're new to this, this is going to be a proper pain in the side for you, this tape. If you're a seasoned power waller, you know this stuff very well, don't you? <laughs> this goes in that little box there. And inside the battery that we talked about, 
we've got the circuit board. So if I just pull this apart, like this, here's the electronics inside. There we go. And that goes in the electronics box, like that. Sorted, literally. So that's it for another video. Uh, if you're interested in DIY power walls, reclaiming batteries, recycling laptop stuff, then you're gonna need at least some of these tools. The most important ones, I'd highly recommend as a noob myself, the gloves. Spend some money on a decent set of gloves and the goggles as well. I know they're uncomfortable. I know we don't like wearing them, but that was close. That hit me like literally there. So anyway, another video coming very, very soon. Don't forget to give me some of that. We all like to click that bell. Did you know that 33% of my subscribers are not, sorry, viewers are not subscribers? Go on, click that button. Go on, click it. Go on. Have you clicked it? Have you? Have you? <laughs> See you on the next one. Bye-bye.